Speaking of which, I got to ask you about computer science. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I do some of that. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, a, a lot of it, a lot of your work is what inspired this deep thinking about productivity from all the different angles, because some of the most rigorous work is mathematical work and in computer science, that theoretical computer science. Let me ask the Scott Aronson question of like, is, is there something to you that stands out in particular that's beautiful or inspiring or just really insightful about computer science or the or maybe mathematics? I mean, I like theory. And in particular, what I've always liked in theory is the notion of impossibilities. That's kind of my specialty. So within the so within the context of distributed algorithms, my specialty is impossibility results. So the idea that you can argue nothing exists that solves this, or nothing exists that can solve this faster than this. And that's I think that's really interesting. And that goes all the way back to Turing. Like there's his original paper on computable numbers with their connection to the, it's in German, the Eichlitzung problem, but basically the German name that Hilbert called the decision problem. This was pre-computers, but he was, you know, he's English, so it's written in English. So it's a very accessible paper. And it's it lays the foundation for all of theoretical computer science. He just has this insight. He's like, well, if we think about like an algorithm, I mean, he figures out like all effective procedures or Turing machines are basically algorithms. We could really describe a Turing machine with a number, mm -hmm. which we can now imagine with like computer code, you could just take a source file and just treat the binary version of the file as like a really long number, right? But he's like, every program is just a finite number. It's a natural number. And then he realized like one way to think about a problem is you have, and this is like kind of the, the Mike Sipser approach, but you have a sort of, uh, it's a language. So of an infinite number of strings, some of them are in the language and some of them aren't, but basically you can imagine a problem is represented as an infinite binary string, where in every position, like a one means that string is in the language and a zero means it isn't. And then he applied Cantor from the 19th century and said, okay, the natural numbers are countable. So it's countably infinite. And infinite binary strings, you can use a diagonalization argument and show they're they're uh, they're uncountable. Mm -hmm. So there's just vastly more problems than there are algorithms. So, so basically, anything you can come up with for the most part, almost certainly, is not solvable by a computer. You know, and then and then he was like, let me give a particular example, and he figured out the very first computability proof. And he said, let's just walk through with a little bit of simple logic. The halting problem can't be solved by an algorithm, and that kicked off the whole enterprise of. Some things can't be solved by algorithms. Some things can't be solved by computers. And we've just been doing theory on that since the, that was the thirties he wrote that. So proving that something is impossible uh, is sort of a more a stricter version of that. Is it like proving bounds on on the performance of different algorithms? Yeah, so that... those are, yeah, so bounds are upper bounds, right? So you say, uh, this algorithm does at least this well and no worse than this, but you're looking at a particular algorithm. Mm -hmm. And possibility proofs say no algorithm ever could ever solve this problem. So no algorithm could ever solve the halting problem. So it's problem centric. It's it's, it's making yeah. something uh, making a conclusive statement about the problem. Yes. And that's somehow satisfying because it's uh, just philosophically interesting. Yeah. It, I mean it all goes back to you, you get back to Plato, it's all uh, reducto ad absurdum. Mm -hmm. So all these arguments have to start the only way to do it is because there's an infinite number of solutions you can't go through them. Is you say let's assume for the sake of contradiction that there existed something that solves this problem. And then you turn to crank a logic until you blow up the universe. Mm -hmm. And then you go back and say, okay, our original assumption that this solution exists can't be true. I, I just think philosophically, it's like a, it's a really exciting kind of beautiful thing. It's what I specialize in within distributed algorithms is more like time bound and possibility results. Like no, no algorithm can solve this problem faster than this in this setting of all the infinite number of ways you might ever do it.